So I got an email this week. Sue from Marshalltown writes, my commute route takes me on some busy roads. Where am I supposed to ride when I'm on that road? Well, Sue, this is, this is one of those important things that we like to talk about. Lane positioning is one of those things that is a little bit confusing for new cyclists, but you know, really when you think about it, it makes sense. The idea out there is that we have a lot of roads and bicyclists are designated as legal users of the roadway. So when you pick the lane of the roadway, you just wanna follow the basic traffic principles. Now the first one is first come, first serve. If you're first in line, you get to use the intersection first. That just makes sense. The next one is you want to ride on the right side of the road. This also makes sense. All the traffic stays to the right side of the road, no matter which direction that they're moving. Don't be a wrong way rider. I mean, this is one of our biggest problems with bicycling nationwide. People riding against the flow of traffic really tend to be involved in more crashes than people that go with the flow of traffic. Now you have to yield to intersections. So major roads are gonna to yield to minor roads. Here's a good example of a residential street that comes along and, and joins a, a busier thoroughfare. So your smaller, low volume residential street is going to, uh, going to yield to the major road. Speed positioning, now this is an interesting principle. If you notice in this, uh, in this shot, parked cars are more towards the right of the roadway. And as the faster traffic moves, they gravitate towards the left side of the roadway. Bicyclists find a nice spot right in between. You, f you find the spot far enough away from the parked cars, far enough away from the dirt and the, and the glass and the debris that builds up along the curve, but plenty of room to let passing traffic use the other lanes to go around you. There's two exceptions to the speed positioning principle, and that's with left turning traffic or on one-way roads. You can see in the picture here, you have both. This is a one-way road with dual left turn lanes. Pretty simple, but you're not gonna ride on the right side of the street because you need to go left. That's a dangerous move. Now most traffic lanes can be divided into three areas. You got the uh, green, yellow, and blue that we're gonna talk about here. In your green section, this is where you're gonna be riding most of the time. You're on the right side of the road, you're going to give plenty of room if, if uh, traffic encroaches near you, um, but you're going to stay far enough out of the sand and the debris and the glass that builds up along the curb. You need to be far enough out into the traffic lane that you're visible, but not an obstac obstacle to other traffic. If you're turning left, you want to be a little closer to the center line than you would on the right side of the road. In fact, this blue section really shows that if you're going to be turning left or changing lanes, that's the area that you want to be to signal that you're going to make a move from one lane to another. Now sometimes the lanes are just too narrow to share or the traffic is passing too closely and that's where you simply need to take the lane. You just need to take your spot in traffic and share the road sequentially. Motorists will find an opportunity to pass around you either in the oncoming lane if there's no uh, oncoming traffic or they'll, uh, they'll wait until there, there's an opportunity to pass safely. Only overtake on the left. I think this is a really important principle that traffic overtakes on the left and the left only. If you overtake on the right in this situation, you're gonna be running into a cement truck. It's just not safe. Motorists don't find that visible or predictable um, for, uh, for passing on the right. So only overtake on the, on the left. Now sometimes they build the lanes wide enough that it's easy for both the bicycle and the car to share the lane. Here's one situation where you have a lane that's 15 feet wide. You can fit a six or seven foot car and a two and a half or three foot bicyclist into that lane and still have plenty of room for both to occupy the, occupy the area safely. So make sure that uh, you, you occupy the lane safely, that you're still visible and predictable to the motorists that are sharing the lane with you. But if your lane's too narrow to share, if there's too much traffic, that's when you need to ride further out towards the center of the lane and take your position and share the road sequentially rather than laterally. Intersections become another positioning problem for bicyclists. Now most of the time you're gonna have three positions within that lane like we talked about before. If you're a right turning bicyclist, you're gonna simply just follow your right turn from the right side of the road. If you're left turning, you're gonna be more towards the yellow center line of the road and then just follow along and when you finish your turn, you'll end up on the right side of the road. 
finally, if you're going through an intersection, that's just simple also. So you start in the middle of the road. Go ahead and take the lane if you're going through and just follow through the intersection as you normally would. And then when you finish, move towards the right side of the lane. So this is a tough one too. What happens when we have turning lanes? You need to follow in the rightmost lane that goes with the normal flow of traffic that goes to your destination. So use the rightmost turning lane that serves your destination. Here's a complicated intersection. This is a tough one. If you notice, you got double left turns. What if we wanted to come down this intersection and take a left-hand turn? Here's an example of bicyclists showing us how. You're going to be in the rightmost left turn lane because it goes to your destination. One final thing that I want to remind people of is stay out of the door zone when you're, when you're finding your lane position. That's that two or three foot area that's close to parked cars. You know, so if somebody swings their door open without checking, that could be a devastating injury for a bicyclist. Steer clear of the door zone. It may be a situation where you need to take the lane, and that's okay.